the Shasta Valley Research Conservation District. Um, when we had uh, heard about the uh, fire prevention theme, we knew it was going to be interesting to forest landowners everywhere, so we contacted Cal Fire um, to maybe talk about it and get some information. Um, none of our organizations here in the Shasta Valley RC are partners, uh, Siskiyou Land Trust or the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Um, are necessarily promoting anything. Right now we're just trying to get the information from CAL FIRE to the landowners. There's been even some recent events that have occurred lately which they can get into a little bit more. But we want to know why is this fee here, what's it for, where is the money going to, um, and we're hoping that you, know, you can take something away from this. Um, afterwards, after a brief presentation yeah. by the Chief Battalion very quickly, we're going to have the County Assessor actually come up and speak just a little bit on the logistics, um, but I would um, ask that everyone holds their questions to the end, um, just so that we can get through the presentation and then get everyone's questions in. So especially if you have something to write with, it might be a good idea to be writing down your questions as you go along. So I'm going to invite... Um, do, you, do you think you need the microphone? I, I think I can be loud enough. Yeah, okay. so, yeah I was here, so... I, all right, so I'm going to give the floor to um, Battalion Chief Darren Quigley. Good evening. Like I said, my name is Darren Quigley, and I'm the local, why am I here? I'm the local battalion chief for CAL FIRE. So for wildland fires in this area from Louis Road South, um, it's my responsibility as battalion chief to protect the SRA lands in those geographical areas. So I guess that's why I got chose to do this. This is actually my third presentation, so I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable about it, but there is no expert yet, I'll say that right out the beginning, no expert yet on the SRA fee. It's new and, and it's something the state's got to work its way through the process, and there's a whole lot of going, going on with it, and I'll try to explain that as we go in here, and then I'll take all the questions at the end. I'd like to just introduce some of my staff here, it's Katie Ford and Casey Cohen. Um, they're engineers at, at our McLeod station. In the winter time, if you need anything or you have any questions on this SRA fee, or we're going to talk about the redetermination letter if you feel that, um, that you've been building correctly, we've got three stations open that can help you with that in the winter. One's in McLeod, one's in Weed, and the other one's up in Cornbrook. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, how this thing started. Um, move out here a little bit so I can see it. In June of 2011, um, the legislator added, added this fee originally to the 2011, 20 budget, 2012 budget bill. And um, Governor Brown, he signed that fee bill into law on July 7, 2011. And it's ABX 129. And if you want to read it, I have over here. It's also on the ledge digest page. It's also there. You can get it. But it's ABX 129 was the bill that went into law. And then that January, the Board of Forestry and Fire Protection passed the emergency regulations to implement the fee. And the first, the first billing that you guys receive is through this emergency regulation. And we'll talk about this now in the permanent regulation portion of the, of the state um, law system. And that's out for public comment right now. And I'll tell you where you can find that. Who's assessed the fee? Well, um, anybody that's in CAL FIRE state responsibility area is assessed the fee. Uh, federal areas, it's not. And local government, it's not. So if you have a habitable structure within the SRA, and that's roughly 31 million acres across California, that's what was targeted for the, for the SRA fee. And I kind of got the county map over here. Siskiyou County um, and we can, you can come up here afterwards and we can talk about it but as you know most of our county on the west side and the east side is federal land that's this green stuff um, what we protect for wildland fires is all the white lands um, within that so all the white lands is SRA state responsibility area with the exception of the cities and inside Siskiyou County, you just have a handful of cities. You have Dunsmuir, it's this little piece right here. Uh, you've got Mount Shasta City, which is this little blue piece. It's even smaller right here. Weed, right here. Doris, right up here, this little tiny, tiny piece. Wairika, Fort Jones, and Edna. 
So any of this white land overlaid by fire districts, any of the white blocks overlaid by these colored shades, inside the white blocks here is state responsibility. So afterwards I can come up if you got a, we can look at your property or if you have any questions. That's the areas that was targeted for this new state fee. Where's Happy Camp? Happy Camp is not a city. So these white lands right in here, it's not a city, so it was assessed an SRA fee. So so is SIAC. And everything that's private that has a habitable structure along the Corrupt Times River. What is the state responsibility area? It's state and privately owned forest, watershed, and rangeland for which the primary financial responsibility of preventing and suppressing fires rests with the state. Our agency formed about 100 years ago to protect the state's watersheds. That's the 31 million acres that became SRA. As you know, water is very important everywhere, especially important in California. So CAL FIRE was originally formed to protect those watersheds so that they weren't damaged by wildland fires and, um, and so that water could be delivered everywhere it goes, either environmentally or, or to customers. And that became the 31 million acres. So that's what the state responsibility areas are. Um, and not to confuse you too much, but there's also DPAs. I'm going to hit on it real quick. We trade land with the Forest Service based on fire station areas. And that's, that's called DPA, direct protection areas, due to station locations. Um, an example would be that Happy Camp area. The Forest Service has infrastructure down there that we don't as an agency, even though it's state responsibility area. So we've traded them, they, they protect our SRA lands, and we've swapped lands, say, in Wairika, where they have four federal land where we have state fire engines and, and there is no forest service engines. So that kind of happens all over the state. We've traded all these lands, but it doesn't have anything to do with the SRA fee. The SRA fee is all private lands within those 31 million acres with a habitable structure on it. Let me get that question, half a camp. You guys aren't even there. That's why they're still being assessed. Because it's still SRA, we just traded those lands with so, this bill is targeted habitable structures. So, and that's what's assessed the fee. So, it's defined as a building used or intended to be used for human habitation. Includes, but is not limited to, a mobile home or a manufacturing home. Mobile home, and, and uh, Mike Mallory may hit on this too. Mobile home was one of the areas that, that there was a huge, huge issue with. They, they took the data from HUD and they took the data from the assessor's office. And if you had a mobile home, you got two bills even though you only had one mobile home. That was a big problem with the initial billing. Sometimes three if you had, well, two parts of the mobile home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was one of the big issues that they're now in the process of trying to straighten out the state is. So how much is the fee? It's $150 per habitable structure, like this house right here in the SRA. And then if you're in a fire district, um, there's a $35 discount. And what our unit chief did is we have, the county has a service area called county service area number four. And it's the rest of the area. So you can see there's a lot of white land here outside. This is the fire district. But there's still a lot of SRA land outside that fire district. Um, so what, what my boss has done through county service area four, they, we put the waiver in for the whole area. So nobody in our county should be assessed the $150, the max bill should be $115. Because this area is all in county service area four. And this is like Scott Valley Fire Protection District, is L Fire Protection District. So the max bill you should have received in Siskiyou County was about $115. What about apartments? Well, they get a huge break on the bill. They're assessed one fee for the entire structure. So, um, even though it may be 80 apartment units, they're assessed 100, $150, but in our county it'd be $115 for apartments. What about 
about condominiums? Well, each condominium has their own ownership, so each condominium is assessed the fee. Okay, so they don't get the break that the apartments do. So because they all have a parcel number for each condominium, individual ownership. Um, should only be habitable structures. I've helped several people in the county where they got non-habitable structures assessed and all of them have been successful on the redetermination letter with the pictures. I have that here. We can help you with it. We've got, we've got the examples of what you need to send to the state and we had the redetermination um, um, form that you need to use if you had a non-habitable structure assessed. An example would be uh, one person I helped, they um, had their main house, three lots on about 500 acres. The rest of it has some old buildings that were habitable back in the 30s, old mine buildings. They certainly aren't habitable now. They got three assessments. They should only be assessed one time. So we filled out the form, took the picture, sent it in, and they dropped the other two assessments. So if that happens, that's something we can help you out with, or at least get you the information so you can fix it. So what is fire prevention? Um, I'm in fire suppression, okay? So I, none of this funds will come to either me or Katie or Casey for our part of the budget. We put out one on fires. We, we go to structure fires, vehicle accidents, vehicle fires, that kind of stuff. So we're funded out of the general fund. This bill is targeting fire prevention. Um, and what fire prevention is, is that we're done to prevent a fire igniting. This includes activities like brush clearance, the festival space inspections, and fire breaks. We do have a prevention department in our unit. It's got three employees, and um, their salaries are in the process of being asked the state statewide to move over to the fire prevention fee. Okay, so they're shifting that, paying their salaries that used to be paid out of the general fund. Now they'll be paid by the new fire prevention fee if the state gives Cal Fire the permission. So here's this bill you got, this pesky little bill you got in December. Um, it came from the Board of Equalization. Mike will probably hit on this a little bit. It didn't come through the normal, normal chains. The Board of Equalization, they um, contracted with a firm, I think in Colorado, I believe, and, and they gathered the data and, and sent these bills out. And um, the first bill you received was for the 2011 2012 fiscal year, so from July 1st, 2011 to June 30th, 2012. That's this bill that you guys have all received. The reason they built for that is specifically in the law. The legislator put that we, even though this thing didn't get passed till after that fiscal year, they put in the law that, that the state would back collect that year. Okay? So and it's right specifically in the law there. So our bills went out, like I said, in December. Um, and, and statewide, there was 850,000 billings in the SRA. And out of that, our department received 87,000 of these petitions for redetermination. That's pretty high. And um, we were going to, and you guys have probably read some of the articles, we were getting ready to send the 2012-13 billings here in April, okay? So from July 1st, 2012 to June 30th, 2013, the fiscal year we're currently in, those bills were going to go out in April. They've now been put on hold until the state can work their way through these 87,000 petitions. So I don't know when those bills are going to come out, okay? But not until after the state gets through every one of these. Like from last I heard, we made it through about 20,000. So those, those petitions had some effect, a little bit. Um, you've heard, you know, I just I was just going to hit on this quickly here. Um, in October of 2012, the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association filed a lot of lawsuit against the state and Cal Fire. And in March, they served us. So we got served in March by the Taxpayers Association in that lawsuit. So that will start the court process now on the legality of whether this is a tax or a fee or the state can, um, if the state can do it or not going to do it. 
this. So that's where that's at, starting in the court process. I don't know how long that's going to take. Okay. So how can these monies be used? It's right in ABX 129. It lists these items. We can use it for local assistance grants, for um, to local entities to do fire prevention work. We can use it for grants to fire safe councils, such as the California Conservation Corps or Certified Local Conservation Corps for fire prevention activity. Just like all the fire fuel breaks you're seeing around, the money can be used for that. Um, we can use it for defensible space inspections in the state responsibility area. The state cut our inspectors during the budget crisis about four years ago. We no longer have them. And it sounds like we're going to get three new inspectors back to this fee to do the LD100 inspections. It can be used for public education to reduce fire risk in the SRA. It can be used for fire severity and hazard mapping by the department and the SRA and other fire prevention activities. So that's what the law lists that we can use those funds for. Um, like I said, the Board of Forestry um, approved the emergency regulations in last um, July, and they begun. And we have begun to implement the fee. I think they've been out of the 85 million. They say it's going to collect. The state's collected about 75 million of it so far on that first billing. So, um, so we, the bills are coming out. And they're all out to all the counties now. And um, the Board of Forestry, and I'm going to show you that web page because it's a site you want to watch because they're the one the governor's given authority over this new regulation. Um, they're, they're, they've begun the process for permanent regulations on the SRA fee. So they're the ones that can move the amount up, move the amount down, and um, have the authority over the fee. So George Gentry is the appointed person by the governor. So, and there was politics in that. Um, when that, when the um, emergency regulations came out, it didn't pass on the Board of Forestry. It didn't pass. They reduced the number. Governor Brown replaced all those members, and it passed the next time around. So, so how do you find if your home is in the SRA? We have a public web website. It's at firepreventionfee.org, and you can go on there and. Um, and you can just click on the right there, the SRA parcel viewer, and you can bring it up and it'll show you if your specific house, it'll bring a map up like this when you enter your address, and it'll tell you whether your house is in the SRA or not in the SRA. Okay. So, um, now this new fund has been created. We're collecting the fee, and the states create created what they're calling a state responsibility area fund. Okay? So that $85 million that it's going to bring in annually is being deposited in this fund that can be used for fire prevention activities. So revenue generated provides a stable fund source that supports CAL FIRE fire prevention activity and also restore programs such as the dispensable space that have been reduced over time to do budget reduction. As revenues become more certain, the administration will evaluate the possibility of funding for a grant program. We're being hit up by the, the grant program portion. In the law, it says we're going to have a grant program for the fire safe councils. That federal money's kind of going away, so they're eyeing this and wondering if that's going to be, going to be the case. We're all hoping it will, that there'll be some money that'll go to help clean around your folks' houses, your paying fee. We'd like to be able to get out there and do some fuel reduction work around. So how much have we requested out of the fund so far? And we haven't got it, that I'm aware of. Um, out of that 85 million annually. Well, we put in a request for $11,712,000 from that fund for 65.1 positions starting this July 1st to address fire severity, treatment, education, prevention, and planning. The request will allow Cal Fire to implement the provisions related to fire severity and planning meet the demand for fuel treatment through vegetation management and educate homeowners on fuel reduction. What I've been told locally what we'll get out of that is we'll get um, three LD100 inspectors. It'll be like a 438 position 
that will then be responsible for doing the LE100 inspections. So along with our entire prevention staff, they're being paid for out of the general fund, being moved over and now being paid for out of this new prevention. As far as good sites that I think, you know, if you're interested, you want to keep an eye on, these are kind of the important ones. As far as I'm concerned, firepreventionfee.org is Cal Fire's website to inform the public. Um, the Board of Equalization, I mean, Board of Forestry, is bofdata.fire.ca.gov. They're the ones that have the legal responsibility over the SRA fee. Not Cal Fire, it's the executive director that's appointed by the governor on the Board of Forestry. Okay. Um, FireTaxProtest.org is to, to follow that Howard Jarvis um, tax. Howard Jarvis believes this is a tax, not a fee. And I'll just kind of back up a little bit um, and give you a breakdown. Mike can probably hit on that a little bit too. A tax is something that can be used generally. Okay, so if, if it's voted on by two-thirds of the public, those funds can come in and say the money that comes to our agency, we can use it for any activity within, within our agency. A fee, that $115 that you're paying, that's supposed to go back and benefit the fee payers. And that's going to be the argument that's, of course, made in court, whether or not it was a fee and whether or not it's benefiting the fee payers, which is, you focus it on that. And then the Board of Equalization. By the way, you know, the big person that um, had a lot to do with slowing this thing down is George Runner. And he's our local elected representative for the Board of Equalization, saying, hey, this thing's a mess. Let's clean this up and get it right before we're sending homeowners bills. And he's one of those ones that had a lot to do with it. And you can find his web page, and he's got a lot of good information there at both boe.ca.gov. Um, before I get to these numbers, you guys want, I got some handouts for you guys. Let's hand those out before I forget. Well, while I'm talking about it, as far as contact information, our Fire Prevention Fee Service Center for the state, they get, they get the most calls. So they, like I said, nobody's an expert on this. Our, our department just appointed a person to be in charge of the fire prevention fee at the Sacramento level. It just happened a couple weeks ago. So that's how new this thing is. So um, if we can't answer your question, the phone is on 1-888-310-6447 are a lot closer to Sacramento and the politicians and what's going on with the fee. So that's the number we ask that you call first. And it's on your fire prevention fee, little handout we gave you. Okay, call that one. And then if that doesn't work, you can call our, our headquarters and, and we certainly want to help you out locally. Um, on the bill portion, the State Board of Equalization is requesting that you call that 1-800-400-7115 if you feel that you got a wrong bill and it's not correct. Okay. And then our local number at our headquarters stations down here, 53 0842-3516. So I'll give you all the time to write that down. But that's the contact numbers you want to use for questions on the fee. Make sure everybody's got time to get it here. <clears throat> well, you got some time. Does anybody else want a petition form? Petition is that the fee reduction petition? The redetermination, yeah, on your fee. If you feel that you've got a fee improperly, that's what it, if your fee was, you feel not appropriate, that's what the, what it's for. So, for example, maybe um, we built you for a barn, or you got double billed for your mobile home, or any of that stuff, that's the form you want to use so that you don't, you get your funds back, and you don't have to pay that fee on something that we shouldn't build you. Yeah, my phone was waiting for people. I'll tell you a little story about the, the one in front of the toll free numbers. Um, the first pre notices that went out to people from state board organizations didn't have a one in front of them. A lot of people called through, and that was a person's cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and he got 50,000 phone calls. So that was the one. Like I said, we've got 86,000.
thousand of those forms, yeah. people took the time to fill them out. So, so he was, of course, yeah, very unhappy about it, and they reprinted them and resent them. So there are a few assets all the way through, but uh, just because the, I thought everybody would have just thought of one for the whole thing. The lady who I read yesterday told me that that's where I live, that this meeting was yesterday. Oh. Um, so I go all the way down here. I'm oh, sorry. I'm thinking she doesn't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll take questions here in a minute. I'll get, I'll get, we'll let, did you want to go to Mike next? And then yeah, we'll why not? Yeah, let's do that. So. I'll, uh, I'll just talk briefly. Um, my name is Mike Mallory. I'm the County Assessor Recorder. And soon after uh, we learned of this, I was, I wanted to time it right. Fortunately, Siskiyou's you know, farther down in the alphabet, they went alphabetically and sending those bills out. So I got an idea of what was happening throughout the rest of the state, the problem area. So uh, I knew we were going to have issues. So I waited and tried to time it um, to put out press releases uh, to let the public know they could contact my office if they needed help in um, disputing their bills if they didn't have habitable structures. Uh, we. You know, I made the decision, even though we don't have the staff, or at least the short staff now, but we have to help people out. Um, so what we decided to do was people called in, and we uh, wrote them letters, depending on what they had on their property. Um, and then they included that with their petitions uh, and sent back. We never did hear from anyone uh, how that went, so I guess no news is good news. So we found that in a lot of cases, uh, anything that had a structure value whatsoever, even if it was just a couple of thousand dollars, was being picked up as habitable. So those could have been situations where people had a, a developed site, maybe a well and septic, or just things, uh, outbuildings, shops, barns, you name it. But we were seeing those come through um, writing a letter for the folks, but they just kept flooding in. We had about 130 letters all together that we sent out. Um, but we, we saw these patterns establishing based on use codes. So I had a contact person down at CDF or CAL FIRE uh, from the SRA fee that was um, going through about 10 years ago. Um, and I got to know him pretty well, so I just called him and said, we're seeing some major issues with uh, bills going out, and it's obvious that they shouldn't. So he asked me to send a list of those types of properties that I was, uh, that we were finding uh, were troublesome, and they knocked out about 700 bills from that. So altogether, I'm estimating around 800 um, people were able to dispute their bills, or at least get them canceled or changed. Maybe they had. Um, they were shown as having two habitable structures when really there was only one, so myriad of, of different issues for people. But primarily, I guess you would say people were just being built when they did not have habitable structures. So I just um, am going to offer that service again, hopefully with this encouraging that Darren said that the, the second round of bills is being held up so they can see you know, research those 87,000 uh, requests to see what the issue was. And, you know, we have our list of people that, that uh, protested this time or requested our help. And um, we'll just follow that. Hopefully we won't hear from those people again. Um, that should be taken care of in the state system. So um, that's, that's about all I have, really, just wanting to let people know that we you have really the best source of information um, to help people uh, refute those bills if they feel they're erroneous and don't hesitate to call them all. Um, put press releases out again as those bills come closer, but we're probably going to be into the summer now. So, do you know how many bills were put out in Sisky County? No, I I'm, I'm estimating that there's, there's around 11,000 homeowners exemptions in the county, people that live in their homes and get an exemption for it. So other properties, uh, non-owner occupied, probably another, it might be 50% more than that. So we could be 18 to 20,000 uh, properties.
properties that should have gotten those bills, and I'm sure there were a lot more. I really couldn't get those statistics from the state. Um, just more statewide, like Darren has, has been saying. And uh, I guess the only other thing I had to say was that the fact that the bill is being collected by the Board of Equalization. They were careful not to go the usual route of having that uh, put on the local property tax bill on the secured property tax, because that, I think, points more toward a, um, a tax instead of a fee. So they were careful to do that. The fee that was proposed 10 years ago, which was just based on uh, basically separate parcels, they were going to hit all parcels, not just uh, habitable structures. Um, those were, um, they were set up just for a certain fee to go on, and that was going to go on to the rich secured property tax bill. So um, I, th I think there was some, you know, politics involved in that, like Darren said and a decision to go this route. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what the lawsuit brings forth. Um, my office doesn't have any association with it whatsoever other than the fact that they got the information, the, the tax roll information from, um, from the county. But I feel like they didn't, you know, they didn't do their due diligence in contacting us to look at things like use code. We could have not, we could have helped them on a mass scale knock out a lot of those bills and you know people just wouldn't have received them, wouldn't have had all of the, you know, um, the worry and stuff in association with them and the anger. People are just really upset about this fee and angry. So. But I think that's all I have. I'll be happy to answer any questions afterwards or if now is a good time to, to start it. You emphasize that your office isn't involved in collecting money. But there has to be a cost associated with you having to field all this stuff and provide us all this information. Yeah. So basically, your office is taking a hit. That's right. Are yeah. you seeing any budgeted extra money from the state? No. So and basically, and a couple of counties have tried that but didn't get anywhere. Um, you know, some counties were, were more county assessors really wanted to stand back and, and stay away from it. But I felt you couldn't do that just because you've got the best source of information to help people show how many habitable structures are on the property. And it seemed to work well. Yeah. I have a property outside of Siskiyou County. Mm -hmm. Why do I not receive the bill? It's Mono County. It's Mono County. Mm -hmm. Mount Lakes, California. Boy, I'm and, not. And I that I do not live, that my property is not in the city. Yeah, so you should be receiving one. Uh, I like yeah. 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 My daughter also she works for the courts in Mono County. She said of the 38 counties in California, two counties, mm -hmm. all the counties not one of them, will never get help for this. Is that Some true? of the valley counties, I think Sutter County doesn't have. Why? Because it's all oh, SRA. SRA. Yeah. You no know, SRA. You saw that one, well, that one? the strip there yeah. of the state it's right up the Central area. Valley. Um, that, not wasn't, SRA. But that wasn't originally viewed as a state watershed that wasn't in the SRA even though it's in the county, not in the city. And that could be the reason you didn't get a bill. The reason they're like the fee is because, actually, it's pretty much double taxation. Yeah, they're calling it a fee yeah, because, you know, yeah. they're calling it a fee because there wasn't two-thirds vote there at the time. And, and um, you know where the state was with the budget. <clears> and um, this came along that moved some money around, and, and that's what happened with it. And, and by doing it with a fee, they, you could pass it with less than two-thirds vote. That's part of the Howard Jarvis tax argument. But there's also politics there, you know, I don't think there isn't. Um, there was a, you know, I know from a pretty good source, there was a pretty good movement to, and, and our assembly, um, at our last meeting, she even said it was a pretty good movement to take this away. Howard Jarvis slowed it down because they're getting donations to fight the fee. So lots of politics in our state. Yeah, that's interesting. How much money? I have kind of two questions here. If I'm right, if I heard you right, they were going to receive somewhere in the neighborhood of eighty million dollars. Eighty to ninety million. Then why did CDF only put in a request for eleven? And this trust me, there'll be, there'll be more requests. 
You know, part of this thing is I think our agency is a little bit nervous about the Howard Jarvis. We'll see where that goes. There's also other agencies requesting funds. I know the three C's have gotten some funds out of this. I don't know how much. So, right, all I know is right now we've requested eleven million. That's so, CDF requested eleven million. Correct. And, the and I'm sure we'll request more. I mean, we're we're a state agency. I'm sure we'll. The sixty-five point one personnel that CDF asked for are those for more of like you said the forestry aid. Primarily forestry aids. There was also ten eight. Um, heavy equipment operators in there that we lost due to budget cuts. So in other words, CDF's going to pull some money out to get our equipment back up and running, not for fire prevention, but to man cats. They'll probably say the cats are being used to do field break work, but yeah. So, okay. yeah. If there's a city fire department, paid city fire department, not volunteer, like uh -huh. say, I don't know like LA County or something, but like my husband worked for 35 years I don't know if you've ever heard of Pasadena, California. Oh, yeah. But for 35 years, paid city fire department. Uh -huh. Are they getting taxed? Not in the city state? limits. City of Mount is not getting. I live so in the city. Or whatever is no, I live there. in the city of Weed. I, I'm not getting a fee. I do. However, I do have a cabin in Plumas County. That's and just I'm, not fair. Yeah, I am getting a fee for that. Yeah. Why don't they take you know, the fair. tax that were assessed by the county on a property tax bill for fire protection? Why don't they take that amount away from the 150? Well, you Why, know, how did they settle on 30? Well, a lot of the dollars? questions. We pay a heck of a lot more than that on yeah. the mm -hmm. property tax yeah. bill. Yeah. yeah, you know, you've got a good point there. And, and folks, to solve that, you're going to have to call your assembly member. Of course, he's against this fee. But the, the governor's your governor, too. You can call, you know, those 86,000 um, redetermination petitions. I'm hoping all 86,000 call the governor's office. What happens if you don't pay? Because he's the only one left. The Howard Jarvis Tax Association and the governor is your, you vote for the governor. I, your, your, for I, I know that. You know, I mean, we vote for him in Siskiyou County. Yeah. He is our governor also. Yes. So I can't help you on those questions. If, if, we, if we continue not to pay it, are they going to take it out of our state income tax refunds? Well, I, think Probably. Well, I would recommend you pay the bill and, and just do the petition and do the protest yes. and sign it to Howard Jarvis protest. Well, they said the protest had to be in by, they gave some date way back in January. Yeah. 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 We were told you need to pay that no matter what. You can That's what a I protest did. letter because if not, they will come out and put a lien on you. That's, right. That's what That's I was wondering if it's. We'll go, we'll go over here and then I'll come back. So. Okay, on this 65.1 position, what do you think they're going to charge? I mean, what salaries are they going to get? They'll be all, all salary range. The forced rates will be in about the, the three positions we're going to get will probably be about $2,500 a month. So the 65.1 is all over the state? Statewide. We're, it sounds like we're going to get three of those here locally in Cisco County. So, okay. so if you know anybody that's interested in doing that kind of work, they probably need to watch that state website for forestry <coughs> positions. The state is probably doing this uh, or more. Yeah, actually I don't have a question. I just have a statement. And I speak really only for myself. Uh, <laughs> um, I sat with a couple of bills on my desk, uh, these fire B bills. Um, and, you know, trying to bring myself to pay them, and I haven't paid them. I would simply ask people to really consider not to pay them. I know that you know, you get a penalty, they're going to put a lien on your property. I even saw that, you know, sort of a threat of foreclosure if you don't pay them. I mean, that's uh, kind of ridiculous, you know, what it would cost to foreclose a property for, you know, $150. And, and I understand why, you know, people are advised to pay it, and I totally understand that. I, I just, I can't bring myself to pay it, considering how it was, uh, even implemented and done, you know, so I just want to make that statement. I hope people consider that. Yeah, that's, that's a personal choice. Right. I mean, I'm right. going to recommend that, you know, you know the state system for collecting, and Mike can probably tell that tax is like, we just recommend you pay it. Um, I, I do know that, that the predetermination, 87,000, got the state's attention. Stuff like that is beneficial to do. Um, 
the I, I think um, what was our name from our assemblyman wrap down there? They said personal emails are better than the, just that standard protest form. Not, not yet. All the governors. Mm -hmm. the, the governor got eighty-seven thousand phone calls too. He might be rethinking it. You know, so that kind of stuff's a better route to go. But you made the comment about Howard Jarvis, how they're you know slowing things down. Lots of politics in well, this yeah, field. Yeah. So. Um, this was a total urban against big city bill here. They, if people live in the city, pay a much higher fire protection fee than one hundred and fifty dollars. Even though we're protecting their water, that's the way I like to look at it. And they're getting the majority of our water. They feel that that the local <laughs> us, folks that live up here should help to offset some of those costs on the state budget. And that's that was the basic battle in the legislature. So yeah. Totally in favor of the fee because I see a need for fire prevention. We're getting more fires and it's spreading more rapidly. And so uh, I think we're really aggressive. Yeah, and I encourage you guys because the state, everything's happening at the Sacramento level. If anything good comes out of here, it's going to be the grant program for local fire breaks around our communities. So you need to call your legislator, and if we are going to be stuck with this thing, you need to hold their feet to the fire because they make the decisions down there that those funds then come back to the fee payers to reduce the risk of fire to your house. So, um, so I encourage you, but that happens at the Sacramento area too. So letters and, and emails and, and stuff where you say, hey, I'm in support of this, but I expect something to happen. Off around my house because I'm paying this fee. You were paying the fee. So the fee is supposed to then directly benefit you. So, yeah. But it's more like a, like the county uh, was going on because a lot of people are retiring. And you notice a lot of that uh, California is almost getting to where next year is going to be like tax would be between 60 and 65%. And you're only going to be bringing home 40%. Well, being retired, that's very much money. So what's going to happen is people are going to move out. It's going to leave it hard for the people who are retired still living because they don't have the money to move out. So the fees will just keep going up and drive them out too. Yeah. So how many, how many right now, what the state percentage of, if you know it, how many homes are sitting in existing county that are vacant? <coughs> Question about um, okay, we're paying, we're being assessed technically 150 bucks, but in this case looks like it's 115 to this county. Yeah. Um, is there any restriction in the in the law or the bill on how rapidly the fees can go up, or is that just arbitrary depending on somebody's well, I mean, decision? There, there is language in the bill, and let me let me look it up real quick. That's actually a good question. The Board of Forestry appointed by the governor, sets the fee annually. And they're going through the permanent regulations now. And they can move the fee up, and they can move the fee down. Um, let me find that one. Give me a second here. Maybe somebody's got a question for Mike. And did you find it when you just read it? So there is specific language in ABX 129 on that, yeah. So like it can be- It can only go up 5% or something like that? Yeah, it could be ratcheted up slowly, or it could go be ratcheted back down, well, you know, Way taxes go easily. It'd be nice if they come back the other way. But um, so yeah, there is language would be through the board of forestry, and that those permit regulations are up now. Is it right here? Okay. So on July first, twenty thirteen, and annually thereafter, the board, the board of forestry, not Cal Fire, and they're appointed by the governor, similar to the board of equalization, shall adjust the fire prevention fees imposed pursuant to this chapter to reflect the percentage of change in the average annual value of the implicit price deflator for state and local government purchases of goods and services for the United States as calculated by the United States Department of Commerce for the 12 month period in the third quarter of the prior calendar year as reported by the Department of Finance. So Mike, maybe you may put that in plain the price deflation. Is that a federal or a state board? The state board. State board, yes. Yeah, that's essentially a consumer price index. There's a lot of different ones, but I had never heard of that one before. Dan, on your 
the assessor, you're our county assessor. Uh -huh. And I've been around long enough on fires to see how useless it is sometimes when we get there. When we get there and they say, put it out and go, why? You haven't managed the fire in the first, in your forest in the first place. So it goes back, especially with Forest Service and with some CDF land, where it has not been managed. It hasn't been thinned out, it hasn't been cut in every year, and then you have a tree hugger somewhere attached to it trying to save the damn tree. And I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, if we get a big fire, which is more common now in Northern California, where it goes through and it does destroy a lot of homes and property and stuff like that. Uh, if they didn't conform to 4290, 4291 in their inspections, cannot the insurance company say, we have these fees assessed to you that were given to us so we could do fire prevention. We give the people all the information that we can to clear their homes, of brush, debris, the roads and stuff, but yet these people come up here and they love trees and they want them right next to their house. Yeah. And when I watch fires now on TV, which is really good, I don't have to climb any mountains, I don't look at what they're doing, I look at the structure and I look at the surroundings. And every once where you see these fires move through these subdivisions or through a hilly area, every one you have trees right up next to the house. You have brush growing right next to the house. Why can't the insurance companies come in and say, you don't deserve insurance, yeah, and, and cut it, and cut them completely through the insurance part of it? Because I want to say in the 50s and the 60s, when the first one started up down south, one of the stories I heard is the insurance companies would get out in front of some of those spires and say, you don't conform. Your insurance is null and void, but then it's a bad thing to do that. But if they knew, say, if you don't, and your house burns, we'll come out and we'll inspect the fire. And if it was because you weren't, you didn't conform to 4290, 4291, we will tell the insurance company not to give you any money. Is that a way to get through CAL FIRE, the word out, and through the assessor's office, and through insurance companies? Then you're all working together. Mm -hmm. And saying either you do it or you lose it. Look what they're doing on the coastal region where they're not giving insurance. <coughs> We're, you know, my office, um, we're, we're more reactive than anything on, you know, fires and things of that nature. Fortunately, we haven't had any bad ones come through and take out a lot of structures. Um, back in the, the 90s, over on the Salmon River, we had some in the Dr. Ranch area and that pretty much burned everybody out. But in my tenure in the office, we haven't had too many. I thought we were going to have a bunch now in Syad this year. Hold those fires now. So um, we do provide relief anytime there's you know improvements are burned or partially burned. But that's pretty much all of my office. It just seems like there should be there could be a relationship there yeah. developed between Cal Fire, the assessor's office, and insurance companies. Well, an original spin on this bill was the state was going to attach it to the insurance fee and have the insurance companies collect it. Mm -hmm. I didn't go through Mike's aware of that. He's got the background. Um, but that was certainly a spin. That spin actually started with um, Governor Schwarzenegger, right? So it's been spinning around there, and it finally hit, and this is what we have now. Well, that one fee was uh, was actually put into effect back in 2003, I believe, yeah. as a parcel, per parcel tax, it's going to hit everything. Um, and that's the one that um, Schwarzenegger invalidated soon after he got it. But, Said there's another yeah, with the with the insurance. Right. insurance. We'll, we'll come back here to the back, back of the room. Got a question? Uh, yes, I uh, didn't see anything in the legislation. Usually, a tax would have an exemption for people with low income, uh, disabled, elderly, blind. Uh, a provision in there for an exemption to pay the tax. Yeah. Being, I'm sorry. Uh, being that. It's not a tax. It's a fee that we're compelled to pay because it's drawn up in such a manner as you know this is the SRA area. But still, people on limited income uh, and they're using the 
public resource code section to for this fee because it allows them to. And then the public resource code section also states that every at every decision, every level of government decision making at every level of government, one of their their guiding criterion should be uh, that every Californian can afford a decent home and live in a suitable living environment. So when people of age or uh, disability or, like I say, uh, what, poverty, or, or, or people that have worked all their life, paid into a system and taxes and, and all this, uh, now are hit with a fee, not a tax, right. impose penalties for a fee, not a tax, but there's no relief. You're bringing up a, a good point, and, and you're on a good track, and it's something that you need to write your assembly member and governor, and we're finally get, starting to hear back from the state system some feedback <coughs> on that. This fee was implemented regardless of the, of the income level. Okay. Right. The land use regulations can be. Exactly. There is. Actually, can create a reverse environmental effect where right. people are displaced out of their home because they can't afford to pay a fee that's in the code. And if you don't pay it, it's right here, it's 20% every 30 days, right. and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's a good thing to write your assembly member, and maybe Mike can hit on it. We are hearing stuff back from the assembly members, some assembly members and Senate members that they never really wanted to impose a fee on somebody that's low income. Say somebody that's living off Social Security only. This is a big hit on them. So, so your exact comment there, and those comments are certainly going via the fee payers to, to the assembly. I know they are kind of listening on that. We are, I am hearing stuff through the back channels that maybe that the law may get changed and it may not, there may be an income criteria also tied to the fee. But Mike, do you have anything on that? I know well, I The only thing that I heard about was they, they encouraged people just to pay what they could, you know, so they would take payments, if you will, but they recognize that it's going to be a hardship on people. So I think there's some inroads there. Yeah, that's something you definitely want to put in an email to your assembly member or your governor that, hey, I'm, you know, I got a small income fixed and, you know, because I know that is, that word's starting to, you know, get, <coughs> yeah. Can I ask a question quickly? Have you, have you ever heard of a penalty like that, 20% every 30 days? That's punitive, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I, that's unusual, isn't it? We just got another bill and you're not, and what I would have paid being overdue one day later is still what's on I'll bet with the 87,000 redetermination, I bet the state's going to be pretty kind for a counter I'm not concerned really about the money. I'm concerned about the idea. It's just yeah, yeah. It's the principle. Yeah, it's the principle. Over here? Yeah. And I'll go back there. Um, I bought my home 18 years ago, and I was told at the time that the forestry department was going to require every home <coughs> to have 2,500 gallon tank of water on the property to fight fires with. <coughs> so I bought that tank, I put that tank in and I used that tank off the fires, thankfully. But when I put that on my protest, it was totally ignored. Now I have pasture in back of me that's watered in the summertime a road on one side and my pasture on one side, there's only one other house <coughs> next to me, and they keep that up really nice. So how are you going to come to my property and help me prevent fires? Well, two laws passed in, in the 90s, and one's called PRC 4290, and the other one's called PRC 4291 that was passed uh, by the state of California. The first one, um, gave us the authority to do homeowner inspections within the SRA and, and require the homeowners to maintain that 30 and 100 foot clearances around their houses so that um, one, it keeps us safe and it keeps the homeowner safe and it doesn't get too overgrown where it also threatens our neighbors. So that was one of the laws. The other one was for new developers. It wasn't for existing owners. So that's probably where you got that on the tank. So say, say you got Right now you want to redevelop 
a hundred acres, for example, Mike can get on this, and you want to make it into 25 acre lots. Now, those requirements are in place where the road, you'd have to have two roads in and out of the subdivision for safety. The road has minimum width requirements of 25 feet. It has to be all weather to be able to hold a fire engine. And each homeowner has to have the water storage. That's a requirement now on all new subdivisions in the county system. Don't they also have, they have sprinkler systems in the house now? And then that law just passed a couple of years ago. And so we're now it's you know, 2,500 gallon water mm -hmm. tank, a sprinkler system, and a fee that was imposed. And I, I, as a fireman, I'm still trying to figure out the sprinkler system for yeah. a house that allows Especially that. I'd rather have a sprinkler system on the outside of the house personally. Yeah. 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 And that's just an extra added fee to people trying to come up here and live. Yeah. You know, and instead of maybe a 1,500 square foot house, now they got to build it, you know, they got to cut that down because of all the fees. I think in Mount Shasta, and this, you know, it costs a lot of money to put a shovel in the ground. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's got to be some give and take somewhere with the state. You know, I don't know how, what your feeling is about this sprinkler system, but it just, with everything going on, where are they going to stop? Yeah, I don't know. You didn't finish answering yeah. that question. Anyways, what was the second part? I thought that's where we got with the water tank, and that's what happened. I just wanted to give you a background. That was 4290. <laughs> it was a lot of the past about 20 years ago. So I, okay. what, I missed the, the second part. The second part was, I have well protected around me. Everything is green. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of water. What are you going to do to help me protect well, yeah. Well, you know, we're going to do inspections, and certainly I'm hoping that there'll be some fuel break money out of the fee, you know, to do fuel clearances. We're doing that everywhere right now. We're active part partners with all the fire safe councils. Well, I don't need that. Yeah, you know, on the fee itself, if you don't want to pay it, remember, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> I've got to pay the fee, too. I have the same feelings that you guys do about it. All I know is our agency is the lead on it now, and that's why I'm here, right? And those are stuff that you're going to have to write in comments to the elected folks, or the ones who pass this thing. So, I mean, as far as telling me, it won't do any good. As far as telling the governor, I'm hoping, like I told you before, everybody that did the redetermination, hopefully they wrote a personal letter to the governor, because your assemblyman is against this bill, okay? So, your senator is against this bill. Your board of equalization member is against this bill. So, you've got one person you get a vote for that's in favor of it. That's where those heated comments should go. But that to also me, is the person that is seeing that not all of this fee money that we're paying goes to Cal Fire. It's going into the general fund in the state mm -hmm. of California. It's going into that SRA fee fund, and then it will be. They'll do what's called budget change orders, and our agency isn't the only one that can access that. And then if the legislator approves it, those funds will be spent on a statewide basis, absolutely. Precisely. And a fee, that's why I told you before, a tax and a fee, a fee is supposed to benefit a homeowner. A tax we can use for those red fire engines parked out front, <clears throat> that's a statewide benefit. A fee is supposed to be a benefit to you, you're right on the money there, I agree with you. Yeah. The truth of the matter is that it, it is going into the general fund indirectly in that they're just redirecting funds into positions that were covered by general fund and then they'll rehire other jobs in the mm -hmm. general fund. They're expanding government is all they're really doing. Right. They're, they're shifting you just said money you're, around. You're going yeah. to take your three people and put them in that fund. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. And then they'll hire three more people. You really haven't accomplished anything The three money-wise. Money Three folks in our unit were used to be paid for by the general fund. They've been part of our budget for 50 years in this unit. Mm -hmm. Now, the general fund. that money is being moved by whatever, and I have no control over that. And now those folks, the salary is going to be paid for out of your fee because they are our fire protection staff. So, and I'm just trying to be honest with you guys and tell you where the fees are going so that you know and, and we're up front with it. Yeah. Uh, just out of honesty and curiosity, we've been burned up here, forgive the pun, a few times by folks telling us this, that, and the other thing. My first question is, are you here on your own, or are you being paid to be here? I'm on duty awesome. today. As a matter of fact, I was hoping my pager would go off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, first of all, I want to thank you for taking an honest and open uh, based approach. I think that you describe things as they really are. I think this gentleman is correct. I think the young lady with the blonde down here is correct. I've talked to all of the elected officials in the last 24 hours. I'm, I am the chair of the Republican Party for this county. And this man's right, it's going into the general. So if you take the approximately 9% that you're gonna get to replace your staff and to do some other work around the county, that seems like a heck of a lot of money. We're pushing down south for not much benefit. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm curious, what are you folks doing up here today? I mean, you're being honest in your presentation, but the basic bottom line is the hands in the back pocket of everybody that's in that yellow area for $115, and we're not going to get $115. Well, I'm hoping we do, and that's where you need to hold your electric folks. If the fee is going to stay in place, I'm hoping you guys and all the taxpayers hold them accountable so that money comes back to fuel break work in the county, and then at least there would be a lot of good coming out of those fees. I appreciate so. that, but hopes on the other side of the aisle for us. Wow. Yeah, I'm just saying that's, if it does, if Howard Jarvis loses their lawsuit and this stays in place, as fee payers, you want to make sure that you try to hold the state accountable, but then we get all this fire prevention fuel break work that the law says. So, yeah, then there'd be a lot of good The minuscule amount of this entire process is even if. Well, let me, I'll, let, me give you a, let me give you a little bit of my background. For example, the Ponderosa fire, I was the one in charge of that last year. I lost a bunch of homes, 27,000 acres. The thing burnt across 11 miles of terrain in a four hour period. If that fee money had been spent to do fuel break work around those houses, most of those houses would have made it. So there is, if you hold them accountable to those fees, a lot of good could come out of it, okay? That's all I'm saying. There's That's a lot what you want to see. Sir, so. with all due respect, I thank you for your efforts in that fire, but bringing it back home, none of this money that we're sending south is, in my opinion, going to come back to roost. I'd love to hear, yeah. I'd love to hear them say, well, we're going to give you 100% of it, but that's not what's happening. That's just simply not, that's not the reality of what's happening here. Yeah, I don't have any control over that and agree. you got to call the state and talk to the governor. I, you know, he doesn't this. answer my calls. Okay. <laughs> probably, probably <not. laughs> but you know what? You know that the politics being what they are, you know, you want to. I'm hoping that some good will come out of this. And time will tell. This is all brand new. I told you at the beginning. I'm not an expert. None of these funds have been expended yet. It's going into this fire prevention fee. We're going to see what happens with this. We don't know what's going to happen with the lawsuit. A lot of politics there, too. A lot of people are more familiar with those politics than I am on, on, the, on the lawsuit part on the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. But anyways, we'll come, we'll come here, and then I'll jump back here one more time. Now, that list that I saw you put up here briefly about the go back. things that money can be used for, uh, some of those items mm -hmm. in that list seem like to me that they're uh, make work. They yeah. expanded. Very, very, they're very, 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 And let me tell you what's going to happen, and that's why I gave you that, the Board of Forestry, let me find the website. I told you the Board of Forestry, appointed by the governor, is responsible for the permanent um, regulations. Let's see if I can find it. This is good. I went too far. So, too close to the screen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, so and he is on the board. So we do have a local voice that's <laughs> certainly got more say in, in, in a lot of how these funds are, are going to be shaped and spent, so locally. So. What's, his, what's his name? Jim Strauss. Jim Strauss. He used to work for him. Yeah. He's still at the board, right? He's still at the college, correct? Yeah. We'll go over here. Yeah, I just have a, a question for clarification. He'll get about 50 phone calls, and then I'll, he's going to be mad at me. Yeah. The, since the uh, Board of Equalization is collecting this fee, I, is collecting fees is something they normally do? or is, I thought they always collected taxes. You know, like sales tax. That's a good point. Or sales tax. State, Income tax, tax, special taxes. I don't know that they've ever collected a fee. The fact that they're collecting it makes sense. I mean, when I saw that they were collecting it, I said, well, hell yeah, it's got to be a tax. So that's the only thing I know that they do. Yeah. Maybe they do something else that I'm just not aware of. Well, if you say anything, they'll probably hire a few more people to do that. Yeah, they have to put on people um, at the state board to handle this. It's been very problematic for them. Right down to the very start of that 800 number issue I told you about a few minutes ago. Okay. Right here. And then I'll so, what would happen if everybody that works for Cal Fire quit? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not going <laughs> to. written by the legislature as an 
understand as far as the creation of these boards that this board before. Right. And I do know that that a lot of the county board of supervisors are going to the board of forestry meetings now because of the SRA fee. And and um, and also um, what, what's your lobbyist group for the county? Um, yeah. Anyways, they're going to the board because that exact reason because they're trying to watch what they're doing there. And um, anyways, I, I know that is the case. The board can't be arbitrary and just walk over to people and trust people. Think they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Back here. Um, this is just kind of a, a funny point, but am I reading the bottom line there, right? The fire prevention activities are going to be authorized by the Board of Equalization. <laughs> How does Cal Fire feel about the Board of Equalization telling you what you can do in the forest? <laughs> if they go, and this was in the law, we'll look at it, and Board of Equalization went, whoa, 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 whoa. We're, we don't want to do anything with this. <laughs> if you go look at the permit regulations, it says Board of Forestry, and it says the Executive Officer, and they've added that language. Yeah, okay. so. Yeah, the board equalization is like, no, we're not going to be involved in, we'll collect it, that's bad enough. We're not going to be involved in doling this out. So, yeah, good point, good catch there. But yeah, that's exactly how it's worded in the law, and that's changing in the permanent regulations. Yeah. We'll go back to the back. What other agencies is it good? You said that it I know the California Conservation Corps is requesting some of the funds. I don't know how much. Um, but anybody that does fire prevention type work, yeah, Are certainly they able to work on private land. Yes, as long as it's through a fire safe council, yeah. So the fire safe councils are watching it really closely, and are hoping the grant fee gets grant program up there, number number one and two on the list, that that program gets implemented. So because the federal dollars are drying up right now on the fuel rate work, so they're hoping this will be a replacement. On vehicle for, for the field break work. So. Could you comment on what the fire severity and hazard mapping is? Yeah, um, one of our prevention guys, and we have what's called a fire plan, and um, you can get it at our fire.ca.gov website. And every year we have to do our fire plan, and it has things such as what we feel is very high areas for severity, what we feel is high, what we feel, feel is low risk. And that's change, that changes. So that guy looks at that, takes input from the battalions and the other cooperators, and changes that map. It also puts, it also looks at um, the number of fires we're having. It's also got all of our fire history. Anywhere we've had a fire, that person's capturing all that data, and um, they carry that on, and it's kept on the state webpage. You can go look, and, and so that's what he's doing. He's looking at all the fire causes we've had in the SRA. Um, where they were, what they were, and what caused them, and um, and then where we have bigger fires and smaller fires lead to these fire hazard um, severity areas. So it's all data that we're collecting. Every fire we go on, believe it or not, we collect that data and we keep it forever. So we walk around with a little GPS, even if it's <laughs> tenth of an acre, and it goes on a map, and we have one person in our unit. Every unit has one one in our county that's in charge of keeping that. They keep it in a program mm -hmm. called GIS, Global Information System. Every single fire we capture, regardless of size. So, regardless of size. Regardless so of size. I put the person out in the field on last week. If it was an escape burn, that was that was GPS by us, and it's captured forever. Yep. And that would be classified as <coughs> escape burn. Uh,
look over 100 years or 80 years, cool. and if the fire always burns northeast, and every fire burns northeast, this fire I have right now is going to burn northeast. So, it, and, that, and then we have that data throughout the whole state. So that kind of helps us out as fire managers. You know, it gives us a lot more insight. Okay, this fire is here, and they, they always burn to the west. So even though I got five acres now, and I'm, I'm probably going to go to 1,000 because it's a red flag today. Now I know where to evacuate. I know where to do all kinds of things. So that's why we collect that data. And now what this is saying is, is that data collector is going to be paid for by this new fee, even though it was paid for by the general fund in the past. So does that data yeah. go to other agencies in yes. the state? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys have access to it too. <coughs> Pull it up on our web page. When you look at that accumulation that we have in our account, I, I've heard accusations, I'm not a professional like yourself or Mr. Dorsey, uh, but it just would appear to me that if we haven't managed our forests properly, and I don't know what that means, but if we've allowed these high levels of materials to accumulate in our forests, so if we do have a major conflagration, let's say, south of the Oregon border and still in our county, that there's so much material buildup at this point that we do have a major conflagration that it would allow the soil to be sterilized, the heat would be so uh, intense. When you think about these issues, does that kind of a overarching disaster enter into it, or is that something that, in, in the opinion of the professionals in our state, is something so far out that it, it probably could never happen, or the probability is so low that it couldn't happen at all. Well, I think there's getting to be a lot more of those discussions. Yeah, you know, and certainly for me being the guy on the ground, I mean, that's huge to me. If, if I've got a fire that's in really very high severity because of the ladder fuels and, and um, nothing's happened with, say, a 5,000 acre piece that's been left untouched, there's been no logging, no thinning. I can expect a fire to burn a certain way. However, even if there's been logging, I can expect it to burn a certain way. That's why I said before, you want me on that fire. And on my 30th year, I know it, how a clear cut burns. I know how a really thick, undul, uh, you know, untreated area burns. And uh, they both have their issues. I'm telling you that right up front. One side of the phone <coughs> will tell you one thing, and the other side will tell you another. But they both have their fire issues. And, and trust me, I've seen it all by now, just about. Well, every time I think I have, you know, I wind up on another large fire. But yeah, that, that should come in. However, if you look at, like, um, an ideal situation for us, let, let's look at one of our fuel rates. Let's look at, say, the College of Siskiyou. So it's a perfect example of what the college board's doing there with their property. They got a couple hundred acre piece there that they managed to push through the politics and thin it for, to be a good neighbor to all the communities there. If I have a large fire pushing that, that forest because it's been well treated, I know that my fire is gonna come back to the ground and I'm not gonna have a lot of issues on that piece of property, okay? Ideally, would all the forests that I have fires on be like that? Absolutely. So, I'd love that. So would these guys. We'd have a couple acre fires here and there and what that's all we be doing. accomplish something like that? Just everybody coming together, I think, you know? I mean, that's what it's going to take. So, um, but yeah, I mean, those thin areas that are thin appropriately help us out on this. So, yeah. Yeah, sitting here that uh, bill would require the board on or after January 13th, uh, no, January 1st, 2013, to submit an annual written report to the legislature on specific topics. They're over eight months behind on that already. You'll see the, the permanent regulations are, are posted on their webpage. Go there, you'll get the most pertinent. They did not provide that report they did they? in July. And then one more question. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, call me silly, but uh, back in the 60s, 70s, uh, or fire prevention, they said that getting so proficient at extinguishing fires that it was actually causing disease for so on and so forth. They didn't let it burn, so it's on and so forth. And then since the uh, management of uh, our forest, uh, there seems to be, they burn 
further, faster. They're more catastrophic right. when it comes to uh, in my opinion. The management of the I, I, yeah, I, I don't, don't want to talk over you. Yeah, in my opinion, it leads to your question from being a fire manager. Fire science. And I'm on the top of my career now because I'm the experienced guy, so I get stuck with these huge fires, unfortunately. Okay. It's caused my hair to turn gray. But um, my opinion is we absolutely have to get in there and thin these forests responsibly so that and, and done appropriately. That doesn't mean take all the large trees, leave all the small trees. There's a lot of politics or take all the small trees, leave all the large trees. If you really want to have a fire safe environment, both sides would come together and do it appropriately and then we'd have a lot less problems. You have appropriate thinning on, and then, you, then guess what we can do if you did that? We could go through and put fire into that forest now that it would be safe to do. So if you go put fire in a forest that hasn't been thin, it's going to take it all. I see now, you want it, the saddest thing I see as a fire manager while other people's contacts and homes lost, I see four or five hundred year old trees now killed in the forest because they can't take the heat from the ladder fuels underneath them. If I can interject to um, this kind of segues into one of the events we're putting on next Saturday, we're actually having um, a field crew training event where to help people learn, well, if they look at their forest, what would be the trees that you want to take out, what would be the small trees or the big trees or the brush that you'd want to take out. So if you're interested in, in doing some of that, I do have some flyers over there, you can RSVP for that event, because um, that's one of our goals here, is getting the information out to people. How do I manage my land so that if a fire does come, that fire drops to the ground to be just a ground fire as opposed exactly. to a ground fire? So please. And there's a lot of good work that. going on there, and I think it's going to happen, but it's going to take a long term. But trust me, one side wants nothing to happen. Well, all, their, all these beautiful trees are dying. Big, huge, old growth because it's stacked with ladder fuel right underneath them. And on that red flag day, I can be flying all the air tankers in the world. I'm not getting that fire on the ground until best case scenario that night, okay? Best case scenario, if I can get everything going good, I might get it around that evening. That means everything within that fire's path is going to be consumed by 100% nowadays um, because of the ladder fuels. The Ponderosa fire, it took it all. It took 100% of everything. There was nothing left in that original run of that fire. Okay. So you see it, I've seen it where it's made runs like that for a day or hours and just destroys everything. But your comment about the fuel breaks and around towns and stuff like that, uh, down south I was on a couple and they did have a, uh, a fuel break around some houses. And the fire worked so cool, it just moved going like bad to hell. It hit that fuel reduction zone and it went right to the ground. Trust me, man, you stop, Dan. You know that as well as I am. If I got a major fire coming, and I'm thankful for that fuel breaks <coughs> because yeah. I've got a stopping point now. And that's so, what they did, and that was our stopping point. When I was in helicopters, if I was ahead, I would take a look and see which way to try to head the fire and say, okay, we can maybe catch it there, or they can catch it there. And it works so neat, but to try to get that through to the other side. It takes dollars, though. So. Yeah, it takes dollars, and it takes getting the other side to agree with you, where they want to hug each tree and kiss it and take it home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think I probably covered as much as I know that I can help you with. I won't take this one out of the comment. And, uh, I mean, I'm getting way off track here, off the feed, but. <laughs> I was wondering uh, why Cal Fire through subdivisions without fire hydrants in high severity areas. Doesn't that really add to the problem? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, all, all we're going to require is that 2,500 gallons of storage in the all-weather road, and we want two points of e ingress, egress, and of course we want now on the, on the requirements is houses built fire resistant. So we've changed the requirements for the type of material you can use on the roof, the, the vent types and, and the building material around the house. Yeah. So the sprinkler system wasn't us, that was not our lot. That was, um, yeah, exactly. So the flat put, uh, 4291 was our lot.
far as changing the building constructions. Now, if you want to have shape house, that was us that changed that. So, if you're if you like those kind of construction, I'm sorry, but that that was our agency that did do that. So, Cheryl. Oh well, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, this is part of a monthly series that we do. So next month we're going to be having um, someone from Roseburg, Rich Klug, and Larry Alexander from the Siskiyou uh, Biomass Utilization Group come and talk about biomass. Siskiyou County. One of the questions that we were talking about is, you know, well, we're overstocked with fuel loads. Well, what if we could take our overstocked fuel loads and turn them into something good, something that we can use? And, um, there's the example of the, the weed uh, biomass plant um, with Roseburg. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that and the possibilities of biomass in Siskiyou County. So if you're interested in that, we have flyers up there. Please feel free to take one home um, and come to that. I want to thank um, Darren quickly for coming a lot. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for smiling He's been skewered not once, twice, but yeah, three times. I did so. my boss. <laughs> Thanks for not being too tough on me. <laughs> <laughs>